Hello and welcome. As always, I'm Abby. This is Stories Lived, Stories Told. And today I invite you to join me and our guest, Fatima Razvi, as we take a communication perspective on her experience as a Cosmo Teens Fellow. To take a communication perspective is to consider what we're making and how we're making it through our communication practices. So this means that we look at patterns and context stories and relationships, and that we use curiosity, mindfulness, collaboration, and dialogue to create better social worlds for ourselves. As I said, our conversation partner today is Fatima Razvi, one of the CMM Institute's Cosmo Teens Fellows. For some more context, the CMM Institute has created a few resources for teaching mindfulness around communication and relationships to kids. And those are the Cosmo Kids and Cosmo Tweens activities. And I've included links to those in the show notes if you want to check those out since those are free resources. Obviously, the next turn was to expand this project to reach teens. And the thought was that there's certainly no better way to do that than to involve young people in the creation of the project. So Fatima and her fellow fellows have created a comic book, sharing each of their own stories and experiences with mental health. This conversation with Fatima is going to be the first of five conversations that we'll have with the fellows over the course of this month. And I'm excited to share with you what they have to say about their experience and what they hope this project can mean for people. So let's start the conversation with Fatima. Hi, Fatima. Welcome to the podcast. Hi, Abby. I'm really excited. (laughs) I'm so glad that we're getting to talk today. And to start off this conversation, um, this couple of episodes that I'll be doing with all of the Cosmo Teens Fellows, we're going to start with you because the whole foundation of your project is talking about mental health, mental health in teens. You're doing this project that's going to be a comic book. And I think the best place for us to start is talking about your own experiences with mental health and how that shapes the way that you show up to the project. So I'd love it if you could, knowing the context of the conversation that we're about to have is about mental health, about communication, about your work with this project. Can you introduce yourself a little bit? Yeah, my name is Fatima. Right now I'm in my last year of high school. And, you know, high school, I think, is definitely also where a lot of like students and just people in general face a lot of these mental health issues. You're just surrounded by like so many different people. Everyone is just finding themselves, whether it be in a healthy way or, you know, in an Mm -hmm. unhealthy way. Um, Other than that, I am married um, at 18, which is also really, I'm very happy. That really tremendously helped my own mental health. Mm -hmm. Um, You know, just having that someone by my side and someone I know that's going to, you know, stick by my side and just really having that support system. Um, I'm also a writer. I'm really into writing and psychology. So that's what I'm going to be studying in college. I'm going to go into child psychology, really, you know, get really into the foundation of mental health where it all begins in our childhood. Um, and then hopefully, you know, I really do want to apply that into more of a writing and research aspect. So I really can mm. help, you know, whether it be parents or other researchers or just guardians um, and really help them see what they can do, what's best for their child and just people around them. That's awesome. And I relate to what you're saying about that too, because I feel like I have one foot in communication, like the academic communication world and one foot outside of that, trying to say, okay, how can I take all of this research, all this writing that exists? That's so helpful that all of the academics, all the scholars of communication know and have looked at and studied and theorized about forever. How can I bring that to people outside of that world and make it more accessible so that real people can actually put it to use in their lives to better their relationships? And I think that sounds like kind of what you're saying you want to do too. Yeah, definitely. And I mean, that's what CMM, the Mm -hmm. fellows and teens is doing right now. We're trying to see what we've learned and being in CMM and taking that communication aspect and how we can just help teens now and, you know, young adults really apply it to their lives. Because I know at least like kids around my age and even a little older or a little younger, we all have like communication issues, whether it be just like society, just not creating that window of opportunity or just 
our own peers, not being very open about it. Mm -hmm. So definitely just, you know, seeing that progression, like taking one thing from another and just linking them two together. Yeah. Well, I think people take for granted too that you just pick up good communication skills somewhere along the way when really that should be something we're having a more like obvious, explicit conversation about. And so that's why it's cool that, you know, the CMM Institute has Cosmo Kids, which is supposed to be an intentional space to have those conversations to develop those like, you know, what we'd call social emotional skills. And then that you all with the Cosmo Teens Fellowship coming up to kind of give like a second step to that project. So that as these young people who have or had not, you know, have access to good social emotional learning when they were younger, can have something to enter in their lives at this stage. And I just think that's really cool. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. So how did you first come across the fellowship? How'd you learn about it? What made you want to apply for it? So my model UN advisor, she actually, um, I believe she was on a meeting with Kim. Kim brought up the CMM teens and how they were looking for applicants. So then my advisor, she gave this to me. She was like, hey, you know, I really think you're going to love this. You know, you're very outspoken. You're very like, you want to help people. So I think you should definitely apply for this. Just see if you get in. If you get in, that's so great. You're going to help a lot of people. If you don't, don't worry. Something else is going to come along the way. So after doing a little bit more research, I applied. I did it, I think, maybe like a week before it was like due. And I had my whole family reading over my application. Aww. I had my husband helping me. I was like having him ready on call, like, oh, am I going to get accepted or not? And then when I finally did get accepted, it was in the middle of the school day. And I read the email and I started like <laughs> crying to my teacher. Aww. I was like, oh my God, remember that thing I was telling you? I got accepted. And then it was just a whole like excitement, burst of excitement. And just ever since, it's just been such a exciting opportunity for me that I'm like so grateful for. Yeah. I mean, from what I've seen, you know, even talking with you all just in the limited times that I have, it seems like you all have been able to be really engaged with it. And I can see that you all are really passionate about it. So I'm so glad that you were selected. I'm so glad that (laughs) um, you've gotten to work on this project. But that's the path I'd like to go down a little more for our conversation is to ask what has your experience been like so far? Because we're like months in at this point right? You've been doing, we've been in conversation for a while now. So, um, so far my experience with the other fellows has been great. We're all pretty much in different time zones, except for me and um, Haruka, who's also in New York, but we all have such busy schedules because we're just so like committed people that like it is, it gets difficult trying to like have the same meeting time Mm -hmm. or trying to like get everyone on the same page, but it's been really like, we're all pretty adapting and understanding of each other that even if like, okay, we miss a few meetings, like mm-hmm. the other person will fill us in, or it's just like, we have this good balance among ourselves that we're all very open into listening to each other's ideas and trying to find out, you know, what's going to be best for this project moving forward. Mm-hmm. Has that been one of the big challenges is just coordinating yeah. time zones? <laughs> Not something definitely. you've maybe been in a situation to have to deal with before? Yeah, definitely. Like right now, we like we're all like constantly sending emails back and forth to each other, like wondering when our next meeting is going to be. But we're all just like have such packed schedules. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely a challenge to make it work. What's something that you've uh, learned from your time as a fellow so far? Definitely um, how to be more open um, to people that like challenge your ideas. Mm -hmm. I know that like in my at least um, peer group and like where I am, uh I'm a very like outspoken person and you know I'll be seen as like oh you know she's a leader she has a strong personality um but these other fellows they all have strong personalities which I love because I haven't been challenged like that before Mm -hmm. and it's not a bad challenge at all it's a great challenge because I'm getting so much more input and so many more ideas and like you know things I haven't even thought about before like Johanna she was the one who came up with the comic book and I didn't even think of that and I was just so fascinated So definitely like I'm loving the challenge and just, you know, how our energies kind of like match with one another, Mm -hmm. like challenging each other, questioning each other and just really like getting um, more fond of each other. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Since you are all such a, you know, global, diverse group of people, do you feel like you've learned or seen more differences between all of your experiences with mental health or more similarities than you thought there might be? There are actually a lot more similarities than I originally thought there Mm. were like and definitely in terms of school too because I know like for the U.S. we kind of like 
have this idea that like European schools are more like more like nicer mm. and uh, less like competitive or especially for New York schools because mm, New York yeah. schools are very competitive um but actually they're pretty similar mm-hmm. that you know Johanna and Tamello who both are in Europe they have so much that they've dealt with themselves and like the school atmosphere or just like their mental health atmosphere and how it's been talked about in their upbringing or whether it has been talked about or lack of thereof Mm -hmm. and just collectively we've all seen that like yeah this is lacking you know the communication and this aspect is lacking for our peers yeah yeah what has your own experience around mental health been that informs you know how you show up to this project Personally, like I've I've been through quite a bit too, like a lot of like past traumas that's kind of like developed my personality more or like, you know, how orderly I am and how I like taking control of things. Mm -hmm. That's definitely come up. Like I know like first adjusting to high school, it was really hard because none of my friends went to the same high school. So I was like Mm -hmm. completely different slate and just having to be open to other people and just, you know, meeting all these different like personalities and types of people that were totally different from me it was very overwhelming in that sense and then just being a part of a big family too Mm -hmm. you know with four older siblings they're all married like they're all married they all have their kids and it's just a very like involved family that sometimes it can get a little too involved (laughs) right Um, and that just creates a whole domino effect so you know having that like sense of control for myself that's really like where I've kind of took all the unhealthy aspects of my mental health and I've created into okay this is things that I can control Mm -hmm. you know what can I control what can I do better for myself so that I'm in charge of myself you know I can't control anyone else but I can control myself I think that's a great way to put it too that it's almost like you know when I hear the words mental health my brain kind of immediately goes to like anxiety depression but mental health encompasses so much more than that and I kind of like the way that you're putting it makes me think of mental health in terms of what is most mentally healthy for each of us is going to look different and has to do with us understanding ourselves and what our needs are. And that is, you know, the path to a version of mental health that we're all maybe on, you know, trying to get there for ourselves. But again, when we don't have all the best communication tools to explain it, then it becomes a lot harder. Yeah. And like for me, because um in 10th grade, so about like two, three years ago, I went through therapy mm-hmm. and that like it really opened my eyes like, wow, I don't like I did not know how to communicate my needs mm. without having that person tell me like, hey, that's not how you can communicate efficiently. There are other ways you can communicate like um, I would get very overwhelmed. I still get get overwhelmed when I have to talk about something that I'm not OK with, like mm-hmm. if I'm feeling really anxious or upset, I completely shut down verbally but I could write pages and pages of what I'm feeling yeah yeah so my therapist then she was telling me that you know you can write out what you're feeling you can draw out what you're feeling and people will understand you you don't always have to be right out there in the front immediately talking about it you can take that step back for yourself Mm -hmm. until you're ready to talk about what you need to talk about because even for like the other person who's receiving this information like for example, like if my friends, if I'm upset with something about my friends, I might need to take that step back. And taking that step back, it gives us both space so we can have that mutual understanding when we regroup. Like, hey, I wasn't okay with this. And rather than each of us blowing up at each other, we already took that moment to decompress. Mm-hmm. How do you see peers, your friends, other people of your age group handle conversations about mental health? Um, For my like friend group, since we all are very open about our mental health, we actually relatively do it pretty good. You know, we ask each other before we vent or we rant like, hey, do you have the space to hear me vent? And that has also helped a lot because I know like some people will just be constantly and constantly listening and taking in all of their friends like traumas and being their friend's therapist when I think it's great to ask you know hey do you have the space to listen to me or do you have the space Mm. to give me advice yeah and that you know that's a boundary like my friend group and I established now and then that's great yeah 
some of my peers, they don't have that. And like, I'll overhear their conversations or some of my acquaintances tell me like, you know, I'm just this person's therapist at this point. And I mm. tell, tell them like, it's okay to set that boundary. You're not saying right. anything bad. It's just what's healthy for you and what's healthy for them. Because if you're, if you are even giving advice to a friend and you're constantly giving the same advice, you know, it gets exhausting. And then the friend who's ranting to you, they're probably like tired of it too, just hearing the right. same thing. So just taking some space away too to decompress for yourself and just setting that boundary really does help if you have the space to hear someone out or not. Yeah. It sounds like with this project, with your comic book, a big part of it is going to be giving people language where they maybe didn't have the language to express yeah. themselves before. Like even hearing what you've just explained, I'm sure there could be people thinking, you know, I didn't even know I was allowed to, yeah. you know, say, actually, I can't handle this story right now in a supportive way. You know, there's a lot of like layers to this conversation. Yeah. And so I think it's just like, peeling back all these layers and saying, even if you're being there for someone else, what do your own boundaries look like? Let's consider what yeah. kind of language are you using that's supportive and still like respectful of other people's own, you know, mental spaces and not do trauma dumping or, you know, whatever yeah. you would call it. And yeah. even in like our comic book, we are hoping to like show, like visually show like what it looks like to feel so mm -hmm. overwhelmed by like just everything that's going on around you. Because everything around us is so like overstimulating yes. and it's just, get, it gets to a point where we can't handle it and we'll just shut down. Mm -hmm. I think as a society too, like we really need to like dial it a step back maybe. Yeah. yeah. Cause I know in like New York, it's extreme hustle culture. Mm, like, yeah. cause I'm going to end up living in Maryland and compared to Maryland, like I'm so like baffled on how different it is like mm -hmm. my husband and his family is so laid back meanwhile my family like we're constantly doing things we're constantly saying we have to be productive yep. and we're constantly saying like we have to get this done today or it's else it's never gonna happen mm -hmm. and then other people around me just take their time and doing things that aren't so brand like you know homework that's due like in a week I'll tell myself I have to do this today or mm -hmm. else I'm never gonna get it done and then you can space it out. It's not the end of the world to just take a break for yourself and not do everything in like one day. Yeah. Mm. It it seems like in my own experience and in what you're saying too, that it, it does matter a lot who we're around and how that affects how we're understanding our mental health. Because if we're just go, go, go all the time and not taking the moment to say, is this the best for my mental health? You know, what effect is this having on me? Because I'm thinking like, it wasn't until I went to college, I was, you know, aware of the world of mental health and words like anxiety and depression, but it wasn't until college when I maybe heard other people talking about their own experiences with anxiety that I was able to say, oh, this thing that I've experienced for years, yeah. I can finally name it anxiety, you know, that that was yeah. an experience I was already having, but I didn't know I almost didn't know that I was allowed to call it anxiety yeah. because I wasn't as familiar with what that looked like. And so I think that's, you know, especially cool to think about with the comic book of having like a visual representation, because for me, like my anxieties or, you know, the way that that manifests in me is like a very physical experience. Like I'm aware that I could be like, oh, well, I feel like I can't breathe or I feel nauseous or I feel tense in my body. You know, like those are things I can point out, but it's taken me a long time to be able to, you know, connect those dots in a yeah. way and say, oh, this is my, and to understand myself. And so I think it's, yeah, one big process yeah. of trying to understand yourself. And if you're thinking about it in terms of the CMM theory and talking about stories, it's like the question is maybe what is the story that you've been told about mental health, you know, based yeah. on the people you're around, based on your community? Do you have an idea of that in your life of, if you think of, you know, what, yeah. what is the story I've been told about mental health? definitely just so much stigma around it that mm -hmm. it's like it's almost like a sin to talk about like mm -hmm. oh you know you have to whisper about it or like be hush hush about it and then like kind of outgrowing those like cultural experiences breaking those boundaries between like okay what is society saying and then what yeah. are like doctors saying and kind of meshing them two together then you kind of realize like it's a holistic approach you can't just go one side or the other like you really have to look at it holistically and like the stories that were being fed on what mental health is, you know, as a, like, as a kid growing up, I always heard that, oh, you know, it's for the doctors to deal with, like, oh, they're going to diagnose you. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's all about medicine. And really it's, it's not always about, you know, 
taking medication is not always about having to go to professional health. Mm. Like mental health is just such a vast like ocean of experiences that people have Mm -hmm. and such a vast like thought process that it has so many, like you said, layers to it that you can't just like nick at one and then just hope for the best. Like you have to go each layer Mm -hmm. of your like steps in life. Like I know even in like beginning of like high school, I was like still finding myself. I was like, I'm going to find myself and I'm going to be the best person I can be. And I thought, okay, by 10th grade, I'll be this type of person. Still by 12th grade, I'm trying to be that person. Right, and right. It's not linear. Yeah. Like you have, you can have so many step backs. You can have so many like bolts of motivation and rush of energies, but it's just such a, like a wavy experience that like you just always have your ups and downs. Mm. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I appreciate all the insight that yeah. you've already <laughs> given so far. So to kind of wrap up, I want to use that language of CMM and ask you, you know, how how do you define a better social world? What does a better social world look like for you? And how do you feel like the work that you're doing with the Cosmo teens is part of working toward that better social world? For me, a better social world would definitely be just more compassion for another person and Mm -hmm. more like open mindedness and communication. Because in like, in where I'm, where I am and just seeing people around me, there's so much toxicity that comes with trying to be open-minded. Like people can say they're open-minded, but then completely shut down the other person, whether or not they Mm. agree with them. So just to see a strive for more open-mindedness and compassion for another person, uh, that would make the world a tremendously better place because compassion and empathy is literally, in my opinion, like the foundation of every single other trait. Yeah, Because if you have empathy, you're willing to listen to the other person. Mm. If you have compassion, you're willing to communicate with the other person. And just those two things really like just go hand in hand together with, you know, everything else and create that domino effect to create that better world. In terms of what I'm doing with Cosmo teens and young adults, I think just creating that comic book and more like, because a comic book is seen as like kind of childish. But really, it doesn't have to be. There are so many like adult comic books mm-hmm. that you see or adult comics. I think to have teens know that they don't have to rush their growth process is important for their own communication and their own mental health. Because, you know, if they see a comic book, I think it's like, hey, you know, OK, I don't have to read a chapter book or and it's more digestible to learn yep. what what we're trying to send. So what our message is going to be. So what is community? what is healthy mental health? What would it look like? And then what's unhealthy mental health? What would it look like? And Mm. just how to communicate that in an efficient way. Yeah. I think the key word of what you said there is that it's, it's a process. Like you said, this growth, this, you know, learning yourself, learning what, what is mentally healthy for you. And in my eyes, yeah, the way that the Cosmo teens, uh, this comic book is gonna play a role in creating this better social world that you're envisioning is not that it has the answer, not that it fixes anything per se, but that it gives people the tools to go through that process. Definitely, yeah. In a way that sets them up for success. Yeah. And that's what yeah. we're trying to do. <laughs> yep, absolutely. Well, I'm excited to see what you guys create. Me too, very excited. We're all in the process and we'll be sure to update everyone as we go through it. Awesome, yeah. Any last comments you want to make today, Fatima? you know, just have empathy for the people around you. You never know what they're going through and you know, never know what process of life they're in. Yeah, yeah. I love empathy as a really, really <laughs> strong foundation point for everything else in our lives. Yeah. Cool. Well, thanks for talking to me today, Fatima. I appreciate it. I appreciate this opportunity so much. Okay, that is all for our conversation with Fatima. But remember, this episode is part of an ongoing conversation throughout the month of January with each of the five Cosmo Teens Fellows. So you can join me each of the remaining Mondays this month to continue the conversation with the other fellows. At the end of each episode, I like to offer some questions to reflect on. This acts as a next turn for us so that the conversation doesn't stop when the episode does. Today, the questions I would have you think about are the ones that I have at the top of the show notes, which are what kinds of conversations about mental health are you having with the young people in your life? 
Or if you yourself are a young person, a teen or a young adult, what kinds of conversations about mental health are you having with your peers? And then the other question I'd have you think about is how can you better take care of yourself and others when talking about mental health? And that question is inspired by uh, some of what we discussed with Fatima today around setting healthy boundaries and checking in with yourself and with others when it comes to discussing mental health, since that can be a really heavy topic. So there's definitely some need to do some meta communicating there, as we would call it. Again, you can find these questions at the top of the show notes. I also invite you to reach out to me to share your reflections on these questions, um, as well as ideas or comments or other questions. You can do that through email, through the website, or by commenting on Instagram and YouTube. Again, all those links are in the show notes. Another great way to keep dialogue going is also to share this episode with someone you want to invite into the conversation. As always, I am supported by the CMM Institute for Personal and Social Evolution. This podcast is just one of many initiatives designed to create space for more conversations that move us towards those better social worlds we hope to create. Other initiatives are, like the one we talked about today, the Cosmo Teens Project, as well as Cosmo Kids and Cosmo Tweens. You can learn more about these CMM initiatives at the link that I have provided in the show notes. Thank you for showing up. Thank you for being curious. And thank you for being a part of this story. Keep creating mindful moments. And until next time, I'm Abby, and this has been Stories Lived, Stories Told. 